What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another vintage Star Wars market update. We've got a nice wide array of items, including loose graded, mint on cards, mainly ungraded mint on cards. Everything from early stuff all the way to Power of the Force. And I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to make more and better videos. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, it's patreon.com slash action figure grader. Let's dig right in to some really nice items. The first one is a loose graded Princess Leia. And Princess Leia continues to go up in price no matter what the economic warning signs are. I just, I, I was really watching this one. I was really tempted by it. I'm trying to hold back. I'm trying not to spend any money right now. I had, I usually do what's called no buy July. And this time I did no buy June my, okay? I only bought like one or two comics and that was it for June. So uh, July, I went nuts. I've, I've got a mint on card, which I believe I'm gonna show on the channel before this video airs. And uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. But uh, this is a, a vintage Princess Leia AFA 85, loose graded. And this one is labeled black hair and belt. So there's obviously a brown hair and belt and then there's black hair and belt. Some of them, they don't label it at all. So I, I don't know what the rationale is but, but behind the, the grading labels, both CAS AFA, as well as UKG. Sometimes they put it on there, sometimes they don't. I don't know if I've ever seen a UKG graded example have the black or brown hair note on the label, but these prices make me want to create my own. I want to create my own Leia because these, these things have gotten so expensive, but it's a little weird to create your own female, okay? I've already got a wife, so I don't need to create any more females in my life. I've already got one and she rules my life. But this AFA 85 Princess Leia so, uh, was listed for $575 plus $20 shipping. It sold for $500. That was the sales price on that one. So that is kind of the new mark on that one. And we've certainly seen higher uh, prices for AFA 85 Leias, but you know, it used to be $350 to $400, then it creeped up to $450. Now it's looking like $500 is the going rate for an AFA 85 high grade, beautiful Princess Leia. Um, here was a good deal. This one was a PBP Chewbacca. This was over in the States, over in the US. It was a seller in Hawaii, and uh, you can see the, the grading label there from UKG is 85%. Figure got a 90, paint got an 85, and this one is the PBP Circle Foot variant. And if you look on the bottom of the feet here, some of the PBPs for Chewbacca, the Spanish-made Chewbacca, have this little circle on the foot. There's also a, a version called the Floating D variant where it used to say Made in Hong Kong, all that was scarred out and all you see is like a floating D. So there's two different kind of variants. I'm sure there's other color variants and purple pouch and things like that, but those are the kind of the two main variants for the Spanish PVP Chewbacca. This one's so sold at auction. It sold for 108, 108 US dollars plus 1785 shipping. That's a pretty fair price. That's kind of the going rate. If you kind of convert pounds to dollars for these UKG 85% PBP Chewbacca's, when they're sold over in the UK, that, that's about what they sell for. 100 to 130 or so is about the going rate. Uh, next up, I gotta show you this one. This one was crazy. This was an AFA 90 Luke X-Wing pilot. And we all know that Luke X-Wings are very tough to get in high grade. This one was listed for $4,000. And I was like, there's no way this is gonna sell. Well, it did, it sold. It sold for $3,000. That was the best offer that was accepted. So um, pretty shocking price, if you ask me. I'm not trying to disparage anyone who wants to spend their money however they want to spend it, but three grand for an AFA 90 Luke X-Wing seems really high, but in all fairness, these are very tough to get in this high of a grade. You just don't see it very often. And, uh, you know, I have one that is an overstock Luke X wing that I expect to at least get an 85. I'm, I'm guessing 85 plus, but to get a 90 is, is just so hard to do. And, uh, you know, to me, the price premium to go from an 85 to a 90, is just not worth it. In my opinion. I mean, I paid ungraded. I paid $35 for mine and I'm expecting it to get an 85 or 85 plus. So $35 plus grading costs versus $3,000 to go from an 85 to a 90. I don't see the value there, but to each their own, I guess, to each their own. Uh, here was another nice one. This was an A85, AFA85 Taiwan Boba Fett. And prices have been coming down, as we talked about on the channel, for Boba Fetts. I don't know what it is, whether it's the recession or whether the Book of Boba Fett has finally gotten it out of people's, out of collector systems that they don't need to have uh, any more Boba Fetts. But 
the prices have come down quite a bit. This one sold for $487, which is not to say that this is a small number. That's a big number. But given that we documented several 85 Taiwans that sold for over double that just three, four, five months ago, you know, this was a good deal in my opinion. It sold for 720 Australian dollars or 487 US. Congrats to the buyer on that one. That's a really nice one. This is one, I've got a long story on this one. I know it's a, an inexpensive item, but this is a die cast cloud car. And it's one I wanna get and, and then get it loose graded by CAS because CAS's cases for loose die cast are the best in the business. And I was watching this one. I was gonna put it in a last second bid of like 60 bucks to make sure I got it. And then my wife called. So I totally forgot about it and it ended up selling for $12.50. And it's a really clean example. It's not perfect. It had just very minor smudges on it, but look how clean it is. Very tough to get super clean for this die cast. And I think it would grade easily in 80 uh, with CAS, if not higher. And it sold for $12.50 free shipping. So I am the idiot who got distracted by my wife's phone call and then I forgot about it. And there you go. So I missed out on a really good deal on a die cast cloud car. So there are good deals to be had out there as long as your attention doesn't wane like mine did. Uh, this was an interesting one. I tried to include lots of kind of interesting items in this one. Uh, this was the 14-inch large size IG-88 incomplete. So it didn't have the weapons. It didn't have the bandolier or the orange grenades that this figure comes with. It still sold for 150 bucks, one bid plus 11.75 shipping. So uh, th this is a very expensive figure, mint in seal box. Even in low grade, these can sell for three to five thousand dollars easily. So that just shows you that there is demand, even if it's incomplete, for those large size action figures. Uh, this was a good deal, I, th I thought. I think Chris W. was the one that bought this one. This was uh, the Puck AT-AT driver. And you can see here, it's labeled Hong Kong. So you know it's the early Spanish figure. The early Spanish figures have a Hong Kong COO, country of origin. So that's the HK that's on the label there. It was graded AFA 80 plus with red logos on the head, as you can see, very bright red logos on the helmet. That one sold for $289.99, free shipping. I think that's a great deal. Really nice example, brand new case style. So congratulations to Chris again for buying a figure that I was watching. Uh, this one just sold really quickly. It was listed and then sold immediately. This was the 45 back Star Wars Display Arena 21B and it had a clear blister and I thought this price was great. Um, I, I didn't dig in too much to the condition, but it looks pretty darn clean overall, probably like 80 grade condition. And here's the back of it. By no means perfect, but but probably in better shape than mine is. I have the 45 back, and I paid about this price for it. And this one sold for 350 on free shipping. I thought that was a great deal, whoever picked that one up. It did not last long. It was on the market and sold within about 30 minutes. Uh, here was a 47 back free four lime offer, unpunched FX7 medical droid. A little bit of wear to the hang tab, plus a price sticker, plus yellowing to the blister. That sold for $207.50. Pretty good price. You can probably double that or even possibly triple that if that had a clear blister. But a pretty good value there for those who are willing to live with a slightly yellowed blister. Uh, here was a clear blister Bespin security guard. This was the 48 back A. And that one sold for $175 on 29 bids plus $10 shipping. Probably in 75 grade condition, a little bit of edge wear. A little bit of wear around the hang tab. Uh, the price sticker is kind of hanging off the edge, but I think that's a pretty great price for a nice clear blister ESB Bespin security guard. Uh, here was a Zuckus, same card back. This was the 48 back, unpunched. And it, it did have a crease in the upper right hand corner, as you can see, lots of edge wear, but it, it appears to have a clear blister on it still. And that one sold for $393.88, free shipping. I think that's a great deal for like a 75 grade Zuckus 48 back A. A few 48 back C free Revenge of the Jedi offer sticker items sold. This was a Luke Skywalker. I like to get this one in a clear blister to go with my 45 back and then my yellow blister 47 back, but just the timing hasn't worked out great. But uh, this one was uh, had a little bit of crease up there. The hang tab's still there. Slightly yellow blister, as I mentioned. That one sold for $351. I thought that was a pretty great price, really, for probably a 75 maybe 75 plus condition you might even get an 80 depending on the grader but yeah you know, i had a little bit of discoloration on the back as you can see there by the admiral akbar photo another 48 back that sold was this boss it did have a yellow blister 
but in pretty good shape overall. Again, probably 75-ish grade condition, unpunched, and that one sold for 481. So Bosks continue to command big money, but that was a beautiful one. I really would like to get this one to go with my Bosk run at some point, but I just timing was bad for me. But 481, I think, is a pretty great price given that if this had been in slightly better condition with a clear blister, you can double that price very easily. Uh, we documented one on the channel that sold at Hakes for $1,600, I believe. It might have even been higher than that. I, I, I lose track of prices. It's all in my head, and I am not good about remembering. Uh, here was a 48 back free Neon Numb offer transition card with Hammerhead. Lots of wear to the card, as you can see. Uh, also a lot of wear to the to the blister, but it was fully sealed. Big heavy crease on the right hand side of the card back. That sold for 256. It was a clear blister though, and, and uh, did have a price sticker with a little bit of wear to the hang tab. Probably 70 to 75 grade condition, but a pretty good price there for a clear blister transition card hammerhead. Uh, here was a, a number of 77 backs sold, and, and the, the very tough to find with clear blisters. And this Neon Numb appears to have a clear blister, probably like in low grade 80 condition. Maybe 75 because there's a little bit of crease there on the back, as you can see. With how AFA is grading, this is probably an AFA 40. Good Lord. Everyone on Facebook is complaining about the tough grading with AFA these days. So I don't know what's going on over there, but there's been a lot of complaints with AFA and how strict they're grading stuff. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they kind of lighten that up a little bit and, and kind of go back to how they used to grade stuff even like a year ago. It just seems like they've really tightened the reins on the grading over the last, you know, let's call it six months to a year, really the last six months. And it, uh, you know, it's, it's tied perfectly in terms of timing with their acquisition by Diamond Partners. So who knows what's going on there, but it is a little bit questionable how they're, how tight they're grading. And we so certainly saw that with the modern items I got back from AFA a couple weeks ago, but this 77 back knee and numb sold for 266.66. Very, very interesting price there, $10 shipping. Uh, here was an IG-88 with a yellow blister, partially unpunched with a target price sticker. Beautiful condition overall, though, probably like a low-grade 80. That one sold for $3.99, and I don't know what it is, but IG-88s on the Return of the Jedi card backs are really jumping up in price. There's been no let-up in, in the price for these IG-88s, and this is definitely one I'd like to get at some point with a clear blister. But uh, that one sold for $3.99, free shipping. Uh, and then the final 77 back was this one. This was 8D8, and it, too, had a clear blister. Clear-ish, anyway. It might be slightly yellow. It looks clear to me, but uh, very nice item. Very tough to find in this cleaning condition. Partially unpunched with a little bit of wear to the hang tab with a Montgomery Ward price sticker. I don't know if you guys remember Montgomery Ward. I certainly do growing up. But this is, like, 80-grade condition. That sold for three hundred six plus $10 shipping. So another big price for an 8D8 with clear blister. Uh, here's another interesting one. This one was the Imperial Shuttle. It included the box. The box was pretty ratty, but um, one of these just sold on Facebook for over $2,500 if memory serves, but this one was by no means complete. It was just the box along with what appears to be a complete gunship, and that one sold for $451. So that Imperial uh, shuttle just continues to command big money no matter what the condition but this one was a pretty nice example a little bit yellowing to that top fin the fuselage looks pretty good though it looks pretty nice and uh, again 451 plus 40 dollars shipping took that one home and then finally let's dig into a few last 17 figures before we wrap up this video this was kind of a beater card but this was ramba mint on card on a P power of the force 92 back yellowed blister Toys by Roy price sticker, and that one sold for one hundred and fifty-seven fifty. That's a pretty good price for a last seventeen figure that's still mint on card, even though the card is pretty beat up. And uh, here was a Barada. This Barada was unpunched, but pretty wavy card back, probably seventy to seventy-five grade condition. That one sold for three eleven ninety-nine, free shipping. So, uh, pretty decent price if you're willing to live with some defects to the card. This was an incomplete, incomplete A-Wing. It did not include the weapon, yet it still sold for $135 plus $14 shipping down in Australia. So that just shows you that these A-Wings continue to be very, very high demand. There are some people that even army build with these, but uh, just the weapon alone can go for $100 to $150. And the figure looked to be in pretty clean condition, probably like 80 grade condition. So just a data point there if you're just looking for the figure by itself. And then finally, to wrap things up, we got a UKG 85% Last 17 Yak Face. This one was beautifully encased with the brand new laser cut case and the etched accessory case for the Vibro Axe. 
Really, really nice example. Again, that one was graded UKG 85%, and the price did not disappoint. 699 pounds or 832 US dollars plus shipping. So uh, just another really high price point for a last 17 yak face. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Thanks again to all my existing subscribers for watching yet another market update. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon.